What's going on fellow game developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we're going to be adding a player health and a enemy attack uh, script into our game to allow our player to take damage and our actual enemy to deal damage. So let's get started. So if you remember in the last video, we added the ability for the enemy to chase the player when he's in a certain range. So once we get out of that range, as you can see, the enemy has stopped in his tracks, but once we go back in it, he will chase us. But if we get hit by the enemy, as you can see, he will just ping us around and start hitting us, slapping us around like that. So to fix this, we need to actually make him deal some actual damage. So the first thing we need to do is actually create a player health script. So what we're going to do is add component, type in player health, just like that. Click new script, click create and add. And then we're going to, once that renders on our little um, inspector here, there we go. We're going to double click that to open it up in official studio code. Uh, you can open it up in whatever text editor you want. Let's zoom this in a lot. Um, and then once we're in here, what we're going to do is just reset all this. You know, we'll just leave everything in here for now. We might bring some back. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, pro, a private float called health, which is going to be set to 0F. So this is going to be our starting player health. We're then going to create a serialized, serialized field, um, a private float called max health and we're going to set this to 100f by default so what we're doing here is we're just setting a private variable but allowing it to be edited inside of the unity editor um, using the serialized field class there then what we need to do is create a start method and in our start method we're going to say not belf health is equal to our max health now the reason we're doing this is because we might want to start our player with less health than the max or something like that so just to make it so we can change that easily in the future we're going to be setting it in our start function here we're then going to go to a down below this and we're just going to create a public function and this one's going to be a public void called update health we're going to pass in a float, which we're going to call mod, which stands for modification, meaning um, how wh how we're actually going to update our health. Are we going to add health or are we going to minus health? Um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to say health is plus equal to mod. And then we're going to say if health is greater than max health, then we're just going to say health is equal to max health. If I can type. So basically what we're doing here, if we gain health, so let's say we pick up a health pack um, and we add health to our player, what we're going to do is check that we're not more than our max health, because if we are, then obviously there's an error there. Um, and then we're going to just make it so we are just equal to our max health, so we can't go over. Basically, we're just capping ourselves at our max health. We're then going to say else if, oh, else if health is less than or equal to zero, we're going to say health is equal to zero, just for um, convenience. Uh, this should also be Fs. Um, and then we're going to say debug.log player respawn. So what we're going to do, we're not going to actually respawn a player in this video, but I'm just adding in this debug log so we know once we lose all our health, we are dead basically. We need to respawn. The reason I'm setting the health to zero here is because once we get a UI in involved, it won't be in this video, but when we add a UI, we're going to need to display our health and if this is negative so let's say we got hit by a guy who deals 100 damage but we are already only at one health so we've got minus 99 health the health bar would be going backwards and showing in the wrong direction and look really buggy so what we're just going to do is make sure it's set to zero once we are dead as well and that's why we do the max health as well so the health doesn't go above the actual max health we want so for now, that is all we need to do in here. So we're just going to be logging player respawn. And what we're going to do is go back. We're just going to wait for this to render. You can see we've got max health. We can adjust this however we want. I'm just going to set it to 100. Um, and up here, we can turn on debug mode. And as you can see here, we have our player health. So now if we hit play, we should see our health will change. Oh, we've got a, we've got a non maximize our screen here. Go to maximize on play off. And as you can see, oh, and we need debug mode back on. There we go. And actually, our health is now 100. But 
again if we go our our enemy is not actually dealing any damage to us so what we need to do is set up our enemy script so if we go back into our enemy script here which we created in the last uh, video what we're going to do is underneath uh, the update method we're going to create an on collision stay 2d so this function here we're then going to get the exact same code from down here the if if the game object tag is equal to player so if the enemy is touching the player what we're going to say is other dot game object dot get component and we're going to say player health which is the script we just created we're then going to call our update health method which is inside of that script and we're going to pass through minus attack damage there we go and then we just need to actually go up here and set a um, variable for our attack damage so we're just going to create a serialized serialize field uh, private float attack damage and we're going to set that equal to 10f for now so if we hit save and we go back you can see it's all set so let's go back to our player quickly let it load now if we click the player we make sure in our game maximize is turned off good and our debug mode is on which it is good now if we just hit play we should be able to see once the enemy hits us our health should start decreasing and as you can see it decreased but it went really quickly we went from 100 to 50 to zero really quickly now you might be thinking oh my health isn't working but actually it is working how we've created it but the problem is our enemy is going to attack every single on collision stay call so every single time this is called um which is every frame um we're gonna need we're gonna be getting damage which is gonna kill us instantly which isn't really useful so what we need to do is actually create a fire rate or an attack rate so what we're going to do is create a serialize field again uh, called a private float which is going to be called attack speed and we're going to set this equal to 1f so every one second we can attack so they can't just attack instantly and then we need a private float called can attack um, this is so we can actually use a timer so let's go back into our on collision stay we're just going to say if attack speed is less than or equal to can attack we can then attack our player so if our attack speed is less than or equal to can attack we're going to attack because what we're going to do is every single frame we're inside collision stay we're going to increase our attack can attack by time dot delta time so what we're going to say we're going to say else can attack is equal plus equal to time dot delta time but before we finish we need to actually put in here can attack is equal to zero again so once we actually attack our timer resets which means we'll be able to the time will restart and it will take another whole second or whatever time we put in here before we can actually attack again so let's hit save let's go back to our game let's hit play and now if we keep an eye on our players max our health down here and we move down you can see once he hits us it goes down to 90, 80, 70, 60. Let's move away. Now it's letting him attack again. 50, 40, 30, 10, 0. And as you can see, it says player respawn. And that is it for this video, guys. So basically what we've done in this video is we've gave our player some health. And then we're giving the player's health script. We're making it a public... What we're doing is we're making a public function we can call in any other script as long as we have access to the player um, object or the game object we can get this component here player health get the script and we're able to attack our player or make him lose health we can also use this to increase our health so instead of giving a minus figure here inside of our attack where are we looking at instead of giving it a minus attack damage we could actually pass through let's say a health boost here so we could just say 100 f and we would gain 100 he 100 health points back we're gonna go back to attack damage 
And there you go. So that is it for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys want to see next. Drop your ideas, suggestions, or whatever you want to see in this series in the description or comments below, sorry. And um, thank you all for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button. If you have any issues or any feedback, then don't forget to drop it in the comments below. And for now, guys, thank you for watching this video. And peace out.